You're listening to the Parents of Hardworking Teens podcast, episode 117, a discussion with Justin and Kylie Coulson on their Happy Families podcast about study stress, life balance, ways to help your teen without needing to be a subject expert, and more. I'm Katie Jones, and with over 15 years in education as an award-winning high school teacher, international external examiner, and as a study coach, I've helped thousands of students skyrocket their results and confidence. And this podcast is where I share all my insights, tactics, and tips with you, the parent, so you can help your hardworking team get happy, smart, and successful in their study, and have you both enjoy the journey along the way. This is the Parents of Hardworking Teens podcast. Hey, VIPs, how are you? I hope you and your teens are doing really well, and I hope your week is going brilliantly so far. I have a conversation to share with you today with parenting expert Dr. Justin Coulson and his wife, Kylie. Now, I am always very clear to say that I am not a parent myself. I am absolutely no parenting expert, so I would never try to give any parenting advice. And I don't always match an opinion with every view of every other expert. And in this case, I would say that Justin and I have slightly different views around testing and exams. I know that he is pretty firmly against a lot of these things in general, whereas I am more of the opinion that, hey, we've got them, they're not going anywhere soon, so I'm just gonna try and help students navigate and succeed in them as well as I possibly can, so that they can do so as well as they possibly can. But I absolutely admire anyone who stands up for what they believe when it is coming from a kind and educated place. And I mean educated in terms of being knowledgeable and researched on a topic, and he certainly is. So I wanna share this conversation with you as I think it will resonate with many of you, and I'm confident that many of the tips that I share will also be useful. So let's dive in. Well, to help us out today, Katie Jones, who runs Rock Solid Study, is joining us. Katie is a secondary teacher, a year 12 exam marker. And Katie actually works with the exam board on writing year 12 exams and the marking guides that teachers use to mark those year 12 exams, the, the high pressure, high stakes, end of end of year 12 sort of stuff. We're talking... I get the impression this woman loves exams. <laughs> Seriously. Well, well, let's find out. Katie, thanks for joining us. Hi, thanks for having me. It's good to be here. Katie, uh, study stress. Whether parents are trying to put it on their kids or not, and the truth is some mm. parents really are and some aren't so much, um, study stress is definitely an issue for a lot of kids who are in year 12. As a high school teacher, as a study coach, as somebody who's involved in exams at every level, what do you think causes all of this stress? Where's, where's the stress really coming from? Yeah, that's a, such a good question. I think you're absolutely right. I think students can feel it from a lot of places. And I think, you know, a lot of the times they're putting it on themselves, partly because they just, you know, they just have that desire to do well and to do their best and show, you know, what they're really made of and how capable they are, sometimes to prove it to themselves. And one of the, it's actually not a quote that I came up with, but I heard it once and I thought it was fantastic. And they said that, Stress isn't about having too much to do because I think a lot of students sometimes go into overwhelm mode, but they said it's not knowing how you're going to get it all done. And that's why a lot of what I do is all around that how part. Like, okay, how do we break down this task or how do we tackle an exam question or how do we really, you know, go about focusing on writing an essay or structuring it or whatever it is. And I think a lot of students are lacking that how part. So we could have a hundred things to do, but if we've got a good plan and we know how we're going to do them, it feels a lot more manageable. I think the overwhelm when the stress comes in, when we feel a little bit out of control, and that could be, you know, through fear of exams, like, I don't know what they're going to ask me. I don't know how to answer it. I don't know if I'm necessarily going to be answering it right. Because in my experience, a lot of it comes down to the fact that students actually struggle to put across their knowledge in the way that's actually meeting the criteria or getting their marks. They probably do know their stuff. It's just around that exam technique. And really, Obviously, when they don't get the marks that they may be expecting or thought they might, then they get that confusion, disappointment and uncertainty. And I think those things together is what causes that stress. Katie, that that reminds me of a couple of psychological theories that I think are really relevant here. Mm. When it comes to motivation and well-being, Mm. we know that a basic 
a fundamental psychological need that we have is to feel competent. And, and what I'm hearing you say is when a student feels incompetent, when, when they don't have the how, mm. when they just think this is beyond my capacity, motivation drops and well-being yeah. drops and then the, the stress comes in. Whereas if they feel like they're competent, if they feel like they're capable, if they feel like they know how, it seems to me that their stress levels will be a, a whole lot lower. A hundred percent. And I think you're absolutely right. Like that tie between stress or motivation and sometimes procrastination, I think it comes down to three key things. And that is, do they know, or do, you know, for any of us, do we know what it is we really need to be doing? So do we know what that question or that task sheet <laughs> requires from us? The how part, do we know then, even if we know what it is, they're like, yeah, I know what I've got to do. Do I know how to do it? And then the third one though is around is this going to pay off for me? You know, I'm not necessarily going to be motivated to do something, even if I know exactly what it is, if I don't feel like there's going to be any payoff. Maybe I've put in the effort before and I've come up with a disappointing result or, you know, it hasn't gotten me to where I wanted it to get me. You know, it's very hard to get motivated for something or just feel like we want to do something if we don't see that it's going to potentially give us that result, especially if we put in hard work before. Mm. You've worked with thousands of parents through your teaching and study coaching, Katie. What are parents coming to you most concerned about? Mm, I think there's a couple of key areas, but for sure, I think a lot of it is around that having that life balance. You know, they want their children to experience success and to achieve their goals, you know, wherever they have been, wherever they've come from, but they want to be able to do it, you know, and I always phrase it as, and enjoy the journey along the way. You know, it's fantastic for them to be able to, you know, enjoy their education, they're not necessarily going to enjoy their exam blocks, <laughs> but if the process as a whole can be as positive as possible and they have that sense of accomplishment or enjoyment of their schooling, I think that goes a huge way. And they want them to have that life balance in terms of having time for other things, you know, time for friendships, time for sports or hobbies and other things that are important to them, family time, just time to sometimes do nothing and relax and recharge. So life balance is a huge one. And really, I think, you know, that's where that stress comes in as well because we feel overwhelmed when we've got too much to do. Um, the other one is around having future choices and opportunities, but you know, we as the adults these days know that there's many pathways to get into things these days. Um, the third one, which is a huge one, is probably around confidence. That's the word I hear from parents so often is, you know, if they are putting in that effort, because so often I work with students and parents who, where they, they've, their kids have put in that effort but it hasn't paid off. And usually that is around, you know, that help part, the exam technique part, meeting the criteria, all the rest of it. And each time, you know, they put in that effort, maybe I haven't got the result they were hoping for, whatever that is for them. Then for sure, you know, it can con contribute to building some resilience, you know, get back up and try again. But, you know, if that continues to happen, they do see that confidence being dented. And I think they really want to sort of try and do something and take action before that goes too far. In just a sec, we're going to ask some questions about the best tips to help kids to get through exams, not just to perform well, but to minimise stress around that. We're talking with Katie Jones from Rock Solid Study. It's the Happy Families Podcast. We've really learnt to take the pressure off our kids and let them decide for themselves. So child number two, we said to her, what do you want to do for year 12? She said, I want to have a nice time and I want to do well enough to get into uni, but I don't really know what I want to study yet and I'm not in a hurry. And so she's she scored in the 80s with not a single question from us at any point, like how are you going with your study? We really left it to her, right? Totally. And And she did really really well not only were we surprised but so was she because she'd done one of those prediction testy things that told her that she wasn't going to score very well at all yeah and so she kind of just given up right so our third daughter she's in grade 11 at the moment about to head into year 12 she's decided that she'd like to be an architect an architect <laughs> but uh, we're not putting any pressure on her at all and we don't really care she'll she'll get there eventually and as katie said in the first part of our conversation and katie I'll, i might bring you back in here there's mm. a million pathways to get into mm. literally anything that you want now the the idea that so many parents and kids still get caught up on that their value as a human or their value as a, a, a learner is tied up in that number that they get in the end of year 12. Mm. It's, it's, it's such a pernicious and dangerous idea and, and yet it persists in spite of 
the knowledge that there is a million different pathways into any course and who cares if you don't get to start medicine until age 24, right? Like I started <laughs> psychology at 28. I didn't graduate mm-hmm. with my doctorate until 30. 30- six thirties five something like that i can't remember what it was mid 30s um it, it doesn't really matter well like why the hurry and why the obsession over the number yeah that's a great question i think that you know so much of you know the culture and the background in education is very you know numbers and grades based you know students are given certain targets and you know essentially there is this big comparison i have to say you know the whole ranking system of students I personally don't think helps without a huge amount. It's toxic. Um, It's terrible. Yeah. (laughs) So, right. So (laughs) I think, you know, that's, I remember coming over and, you know, look, I'd say there's probably even more numbers and letters going on over in the UK system. I actually started my teaching career over in the UK and I came here, but we don't rank students over there. And I was really puzzled the one time I was teaching and the students were asking me, so where did I come? Where did I come? And I was doing the whole doesn't matter where you come it's just you know about you know how you feel about where you're at and you know where we can go from there like what's gone well where you could improve and then I realized like oh no there's like there's all these numbers so I think it's I think it is a part of the system um but you're absolutely right there are so many ways and those pathways are growing all of the time um you know we it's likely that we're going to change careers I certainly didn't start out as a teacher and so really yeah being aware of all of that and finding you know essentially what it's going to be it's not it's not important to necessarily know exactly what we need to be and what what we need to do to get there there will be a way to get there for sure okay so in the last couple of minutes that we've got let's unpack a couple of those more efficient more effective high impact study methods if i've got a child who is doing year 12 or in fact doing any exams now that we're getting towards the end of the year uh what what are the best things that i can do to support them in their studies Yeah, great question, because I think a lot of parents, especially when their children are into those eight years, feel a little bit stuck sometimes with trying to help them because they feel like they need to know the subject content to be able to help them. And obviously, when it's those year 12 subjects, you know, that's not as easy. And, you know, I always say to parents, like, you don't need to have the, you know, the latest novel by your bedside. You don't need to have read the textbook for whatever topic it is. It really is around those skills. So for sure, you know, giving them some of the practical support, of course, that love and reassurance that, you know, it is not all about the numbers, but also being there to sort of help them where they may need that extra support. So two very tactical, like very tangible things that I would say to parents is helping them. A lot of people talk about time management. And I think a lot of students, especially if they're trying to achieve that life balance of doing other things in their life, rather than, I don't love the term time management. I like to give them outcomes. So scheduled outcomes, like if we're going to sit down and do this task, what do we want to get out of it in X amount of time to help them not sort of go go down those rabbit holes of research, like spending hours and hours finding more and more and more research, for example, for for a research project or an inquiry, like what do we really need to know? What's going to meet those criteria? Of course, unless it's something they love and that's fine, but it's not, it's going to be like trying to find that balance there. And likewise, when they're trying to help them maybe tackle a task, I always say to look for the command word. So if they can just help them look for that verb in the question, are they needing to describe, are they needing to explain, or is it analyzed, whatever it might be, just to point them in the right direction and stop them sort of potentially going off on tangents or just to give them a bit of a prompt in the right direction without necessarily needing to know any specific subject knowledge. Those are two things that I know help a lot of parents and students a lot. And let's say I've got a child who's completely unmotivated, doesn't want to do anything. Mm. So, And I'm thinking of me when I was in year 12, uh, in <laughs> fact, when I was in high school, full stop, end of story. I, mm. I just hated it. And no matter how much my parents begged, bribed, cajoled, coerced, they could not get me to do any study at all. If I'm a parent of a child like that, what do you say for mums and dads who really want to see their child? They're not even worried about fulfilling their potential. They just want them to get out of bed and have a go. <laughs> what, what do they do in that situation? Yeah, look, I think, I think deep down, you know, all of us, teenagers, adults, children, I think we do. I think we do want to, you know, be successful. In I think we do want that sense of achievement. I think it's just about finding where that lies and how to then engage them with that. So whether it's relating something to something that they are interested in, that's a huge part of it. I think it is about sort of thinking about 
what the bigger picture of things. So no, we may not want to get this mass homework done right now, but you know, where is that potentially going to get us? What do we need to have just, you know, ticked off the list or what's the stepping stone that that could lead to in the bigger picture? This has been such a great conversation, Katie. We've got another child going through year 12 next year. She's she's <laughs> gearing up for it and I can already see no, that um, helping her to focus on outcomes <laughs> is going to be a really important skill that we will uh, need to hone in on. That's Katie Jones from Rock Solid Study. I feel, Katie, when I say Rock Solid Study, I feel like I need to sound like one of those guys on Triple M. Can I just say that again? Can I, can I do it with the Triple M voice? I used to be a radio announcer. Oh, no. That's Katie Jones from Rock Solid Study. Did that sound like Triple M, Kylie? Did it, did it, did it work? Rock Solid Study. No? You don't, you don't want that on your ads on the on the internet, do you, Katie? That sounds way too rock star for me. I am, I'm not that cool and, and fantastic, I feel, I'm afraid. Uh, Katie Jones from Rock Solid Study. Uh, Katie is a secondary teacher, a Year 12 exam marker, uh, works with the exam board on writing Year 12 exams and, and marking guides and has a website. Just Google her, Katie Jones, Rock Solid Study. Thanks, Katie. Lovely. Thank you so much. It's been great. If you're ready to have your teen achieve their best possible results with less stress, then I want to invite you to enroll them in the 10-week grade transformation program, where they're going to learn the key concepts, skills, and strategies to catapult their performance in assessments and exams. It's risk-free. They either achieve bigger and better results with a whole lot more confidence in 10 weeks, or we refund you in full. Just head over to www.rocksolidstudy.com forward slash program and I'll see you there.